This interview is being conducted for the Veterans History Project for the Library of Congress. The veteran's name is Frank Albert Jones. He was born on 10-26-1929. He served in the Korean conflict during June 1947. He achieved the rank of PFC. We are recording this on November 10th, 2015. My name is Lindsay Odom and I'm conducting this interview, no relation. So Mr. Jones, tell me a little bit about your childhood. I know you said you were from Delaware, right? Right. So what did you have? Claymont, Claymont Delaware. Claymont, Delaware. Awesome. And, uh, what's to tell? Uh, you went to the University of Delaware, correct? Went to the University of Delaware, graduated as a chemical engineer. Okay. And I went to work first, as I mentioned, time for an electric house and rubber company in Wilmington. And uh, we made all the hose for uh, Sears and Roebuck. And we had contracts with uh, GM, and which always amazed me. We lost the contract because of 20 cents a year on the price of a Cadillac. Wow. <laughs> 20 cents. 20 cents. Oh, wow. We were 20 cents too, too expensive. Right. So, uh, oh, wow. My whole times have changed, right? Absolutely. <laughs> So tell me about, um, you were drafted, correct? Yes. After you graduated from University of Delaware? No, I graduated in June, got drafted in September. Okay. So how did you find out that you were drafted? Uh, they came and got me and mm -hmm. shipped me off. Really? Yeah. So what was that process like? Where did they send you after you were drafted? Uh, initially, we, I went to Maryland. Okay. And I forget the name of the, of the fort there. <coughs> and you were introduced there and issued uniforms and I don't know what all took place. Then I was shipped to uh, Pennsylvania to uh, all the mountains there. Mm -hmm. And uh, for four, four months, had four months of training to learn to be a uh, soldier, and uh, I uh, was uh, passed all the tests for the various weapons, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and while I was in college, I was on the uh, rifle team. Uh, so you knew which, how to shoot and everything? Which had not a lot to do with it. And Delaware was uh, one of those schools where uh, you had to take uh, ROTC. Mm -hmm. So I had two years of ROTC while I was at the University of Delaware. And uh, ended up with four months of trading uh, for the, uh, while I was drafted. Okay. And then, uh, well, As I mentioned, then I was shipped to uh, Arkansas, uh, and that, that's where I was to serve. There were about 20 of us there to oversee the building of this $100 million plant to make the bombs. Wow. And that's where I became the uh, uh, second in command of the filling and clustering division. Wow. And uh, I was there for seven years. <coughs> so what kind of things, what was training, what was training camp like? Uh, I don't in know Pennsylvania? The, with the, yeah, it was in Pennsylvania. Uh, what kind of things did you do at training camp? Uh, shot every weapon you could think of, mm -hmm. and uh, you see the pictures of people crawling through the mud puddles while they fire stuff over your head, did that, and uh, uh, ended up getting discharged as a PFC, as I mentioned, and uh, the next day rehired by the government, as they, uh, this was in Arkansas. Uh, 
as the uh, second in command of the bomb filling and clustering division. Wow. And uh, spent seven years there. And they got a budget cut so that I was uh, discharged. And I had the opportunity for a job in California. I don't remember the name of the company. And or New Jersey, which is the one I went to, which put me with Johnson and Johnson Pharmaceutical mm -hmm. for 36 years. Wow. And uh, currently, uh, Young son, Robert, he's in the picture there, mm -hmm. is president of the Acra Pharmaceutical Company in New Jersey. Oh, wow. And I may have mentioned all this before, I'll bore you. Uh, he grew up in New Jersey. We were there at that point. And he became the, uh, New Jersey's first ever seven foot high jumper. Wow. In high school. And uh, later, Mark, uh, my namesake uh, was in New Jersey, and uh, he, uh, junior and senior year, was national right. high jump champion. Wow. And he's the one that's on a, uh, he's dropped it now, but he was on a uh, athletic scholarship at the University of Colorado. And uh, is now going to enough courses to graduate, but he's been to a couple of the wrong courses because it, he was kept out of those because he had to go track practice the high jump. Wow, but, you yeah. Know, the, the athletic end of it. Mm. So he's got a couple of courses he has to take to get it all together. Mm. And, okay. Uh, awesome. So tell me about um, what you did in Arkansas. Uh, what you did with the bombs. <clears throat> did you make them? Yeah, we, I, my crew, I had, I don't know, maybe 80 people working for me, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to, uh, well, the bombs, one, uh, <laughs> had a 91 day shelf life. Wow. So that if you, after you've had them 91 days in the, we had a whole woods full of buildings there. Uh, Cooled buildings, uh, the juice for the bugs wore out. Mm. So you had to bring them back in, dump them, clean them, etc. And an interesting thing, uh, leaving any time you left the plant, the bomb plant, uh, you had to take a decontaminating shower. <clears throat> and you had clean shoes and you had dirty shoes. And you had clean ones outside and dirty ones inside. Okay. And you switched shoes and uniforms and what have you. And many people had difficulties, the guys with their wives, because they never took a shower. Because you, you took, I, I would average about seven showers a day. Oh, right. Because wow. I'd have to go out for lunch, I'd have to go out for a meeting, and any time you went out, you had to take a shower. Mm -hmm. And uh, so mm -hmm. it was interesting to yeah. say the least. So where did they teach you to make the bombs? Did they teach you at Delaware with your chemical engineering experience, or uh, in uh, Arkansas? I just went with it. Your, your uh, technical training was required, and <clears throat> being a chemical engineer, I was qualified as a technically trained person. Mm -hmm. Know that uh, you just automatically knew that kind of stuff. Right. So, what were your daily tasks like in Arkansas? Just building the bombs. Yeah. Mhm. Mm <clears throat> what and what what type of bombs specifically did you say you made? Uh, atomic bombs. Then, back then, uh, which has always comforted me, uh, the intent was not to kill people. Mhm. Mm it was to make people sick so that somebody had to take care of them. And people lost their will to fight. Mm. So okay. then, 68, I think it was, uh, the president then, Nixon, uh, 
signed treaties around the world that we would not participate in biological warfare. Okay. So the, the, they haven't since, but when I was drafted, uh, I was, I was, like I said, I had four months in the mountains of Pennsylvania learning how to be a soldier. And then I was posted to uh, Arsenal, uh, Arsenal in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And that's where we did the bomb building business. And I was there for seven years as a PFC and got discharged. And then the next morning hired back in as a GS-9, which is a position in the governmental routine. Okay. And, uh, so what kind of things did you do with that role? That was building the bombs and cleaning the bombs and okay. so forth. I, oh, the, I had but five buildings under me, and uh, I don't know, probably 80, 90 people. Wow. And we had to train the operators, and <coughs> I had uh, superintendents, guys that supervised the, the, the group and mm -hmm. reported to me, and so on and so forth. Okay. And, so, uh, excuse uh, me, go ahead. Uh, uh, Big part was, as I mentioned, the uh, fact that uh, the attorneys of the world <coughs> have uh, and arranged, I guess it's still that way, that you had to have a local attorney in order to go to court. And uh, so any place I went, you know, this is while I'm with J&J, because patents was my big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I classified with a technical background because as a chemical engineer uh, and uh, would hire a local attorney to represent us in court if we were going to court. And I'd work with him and go to court with him like in uh, Oh, Germany. And I was in the high court with the, with the guy. And uh, he was amazed because the judges in their robes and so forth came down off the bench. And I had dragged from New Jersey stuff to show how this thing that we were talking about worked. Right. And they were running it and making it work and enjoying themselves. Yeah. And uh, so, so, you, was, so you went to Germany. Oh yeah. Okay. I've been in. Uh, oh, there's uh, seven continents in the U.S. I've been in six of them. Really. I've never made didn't never made Australia. Okay. Uh, but all the other ones I have, and. Uh, in the course of my career with J&J, &J, I've visited 140 countries Wow! around the world. That's amazing. And, uh, what a great life. It was. And uh, she went with me a good part of the time. Mm -hmm. In the mornings, I'd get picked up and taken to the local attorney's office, and she would go shopping or traveling. And, <laughs> Living the life. Living the life. <laughs> That's awesome. So what did, what did you make these bombs for in Arkansas? Were they for the Korean conflict? Yeah. So how did that affect your duties as a chemical engineer? What did they need these bombs for? Where would the bombs go to after you made them? Uh, went to uh, air, the airport in uh, Arkansas and were flown away by the Air Force. We made them for the Air Force. Okay. <clears throat> and like I said, it was saving for my feelings that uh, we didn't make the bombs to kill people, we made them to, uh, to make them sick. Mm. And if they got sick, they had to take, get, have somebody to take care of them. Right. And a, a uh, population, like the Russian population, would you know, get 
upset and, and inoperative, uh, having to take care of the sick mm -hmm. rather than going out and shooting people. Right. So what uh, was in the bombs that made people sick? Uh, biological war warfare, biological units, bugs. Okay. And I don't know, I didn't know that end of it. Somebody else made those and pumped them over to where I was and we filled them into the bombs and made the bombs and so on and so forth. So how exactly did you make the bombs? What Pardon? was that like? How exactly did you make the bombs and put the, what was the process like for that? Uh, somebody had made pieces and parts and we put them together. Okay. Essentially. So what was your favorite part about being in Arkansas and working on that team and making the bombs as a chemical engineer? Uh, I didn't like it at the time. It was something that was kind of forced on me. Mm -hmm. But the review, this is local, recent, a long time ago, I recognized that uh, I got far greater responsibility sooner than I would have gotten in a private industry. Mm. By working on the bombs? Well, yeah. Okay. Because I had uh, so many people working for me, it was my responsibility. Right. And uh, that's what it boiled down to. Mm -hmm. The tail end of my careers, uh, with J and J, and I, I forget all the names or whatever, but <coughs> I was pos <coughs> positioned as a uh, something or other, whatever I was called, superintendent of local business or something it was, but uh, everyone got a, a notice from this, the uh, Vice President of Research, that they were to take any problem they had, be it a work problem or a personal home problem, to me. To you, wow. And I would assist them with it, and that whatever we did would not be subject to a review by anyone. Mm. So it was a final decision, whatever I said, essentially. Mm. What were some of those issues that people would have? Uh, it's probably impolite to tell you that my head supervisor, we, lived, we operated out of an old building in New Jersey, in Milltown, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, he was not a nice person. And one afternoon, he's riding down this old elevator in the warehouse, and he grabs the breast of the oh no, <laughs> well, that the is gal that he was riding with. So certain issues like that, then. So immediately, that's all my desk. Right. So immediately, I had him, and I said, "This is it. Go home, work it out with your wife. Mm -hmm. You come in in the morning. If you want to retire." We will run the papers for you. Hmm. If you don't want to retire, I will fire you. Right. And that was the type of mm -hmm. okay. things I got into. So what kind of skills did you learn being in Arkansas and serving, making these bombs for the Korean conflict that you maybe learned that helped you later in life? Or life lessons that you learned in Arkansas making those bombs? Uh, Nothing really. Uh, you had to have a technical background. I already had that by virtue of being a chemical engineer. Right. That's what my degree is in. It's tagging around there someplace. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> while in the Army, I had learned how to fire all the art, uh, weapons and machine guns and mortars and all that kind of stuff in the uh, Army. And I kept getting. Short, I felt gypped, in essence, in that. For instance, while we're doing the bobs, uh, 
regular army guys came in and they were given extra pay because we didn't have a uh, kitchen or anything of that nature at the, at the base. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but there was a uh, club and they would get uh, this amount of money to, you know, because they were regular army and they had a, a sedan, an automobile, and they would follow the trucks that hauled the bombs away. Mm -hmm. In case something along the way happened, they were there to, you know, handle things. Uh, I got discharged, uh, or not discharged, but posted in Arkansas at that arsenal, which is where we were making the bombs. They would come in in their sedans and get the extra money. I didn't get any, hmm. and not only I, but others. And we had to you know, do what we were supposed to be doing. So uh, one afternoon I got discharged from the Army as a PFC. And the next morning they hired me back in as a uh, GS-9, which is a raid in the governmental service. And uh, that way then, since there was no kitchen or what have you, we had to shower, etc., leaving the plant and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, it was saving a couple of things. One, I got more experience quicker in handling people and so forth than I would have not doing that. Right. Uh, but that's about all I can say. We were involved in many, many things. I have a lot of interesting memories. Uh, leaving the plant, uh, we had a shower mm -hmm. to, uh, because of the threat of having been exposed to the bugs. <coughs> and there was a guy there from the Navy <coughs> had one leg. Wow. He ran like you could not believe right. on one leg. Mm -hmm. And he would beat us to the shower <laughs> in, <laughs> in the, in the uh, shower room, uh, just flying on this one. Wow. One I didn't think it was possible. Yeah. But he, he, he could do it. He was unbelievable. Interesting hmm. guy. Yeah. And, uh, so I know that you uh, mentioned this to me earlier, but you are unable to give blood. Is that yes. correct? Can you talk a little bit about that and why? Only because I was exposed to the, the bugs and the uh, stuff we were putting in the bombs. Wow. Uh, I went into the filling station if something jammed up in there and didn't work. Mm -hmm. A hood, suit, and I'd go, they locked me in until I figured out what was wrong and we straightened it out and then they let me back out and I'd go clean up. Wow. So was that part of training? Or that was just That was just everything? part of the job, part wow. of the operation. What other things did you do like that that were part of the job? Uh, that was it except that uh, we got three dollars and sixty-five cents a day mm -hmm. uh, for three meals, and uh, which was kind of ridiculous. We didn't have this is in Pennsylvania. We didn't have a uh, kitchen, <coughs> but there was an NCO's club, and they served meals, and, and their meals were pretty good. Mm -hmm. I hired on with them to run the club on weekends, and my buddy did the same. So Saturday and Sunday, we did breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And three dollars and sixty-five cents a day that we collected, we got free meals, oh, wow. so we could put the money in our pocket. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good plan. So did you meet a lot of friends when you were in Arkansas working on the bombs? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Uh, Any that you st still keep up with today? No. No. It's a uh, good many of them have uh, passed away now. They've died. Mm. And, uh, so uh, there were, I think, as I recall, roughly 20 of us in Arkansas at this arsenal. And uh, worked day and night supervising the, uh, I shouldn't say supervising, overlooking and watching the primary contractor to make sure he was building the place correctly. Mm -hmm. Like one of my buildings, Building 85, huge big tall thing. <coughs> There was a deal there to stuff was shipped up to them to fill to work with the bombs and so forth, and that the fluid that others made across the way was pumped over to us, so we had it to fill the bombs and put them in the containers, the bomb-shaped things and so forth. Then we had to haul them to the airport in uh, somewhere, wherever they were going to go. And uh, the regular army guys would, in their sedan, with their $3.65, uh, go with them to cover them on the road if something went wrong or whatever. And uh, like I said before, that didn't involve me, but I recognized later that it gave me more responsibility quicker than I would have had if I was just in a civilian job somewhere. Right. Uh, hmm. So how did you keep up with your family in Delaware while you were in Arkansas? <coughs> uh, visits back and forth, essentially, that was, that was about it. So they let you go back and visit from time to time? Oh, yeah. What would you do for fun while you were in Arkansas? Or I know you said you hung out with your friends and had the club um, where y'all made food. What other things that you, did you do while you were off duty? Uh, bowl. Uh, you know, on a bowling team, what else did I do? I don't remember because... Uh, being married, you're, you're a little limited. Right. <laughs> so did you? where did you meet your wife? At the arsenal okay. in uh, Arkansas. She was born and raised, she was a New Year's baby in Arkansas. Oh, wow. And uh, that's her picture mm -hmm. up there. And uh, She's she ended up being my secretary while I was in Arkansas. Okay. So that's she was the, your secretary while you were working on the bombs? Yeah. Okay. And uh, when J&J uh, &J was more important, well, I was with J&J &J for the 36 years. Uh, I traveled, there were many plants around the world. And uh, she was able to go with me and did, and many of them, and she could travel or go to the beach or do something during the day while I got called off to the attorney's office. Mm -hmm. So um, did you end your time in Arkansas when the Korean conflict was over? No, that was before. I got uh, <coughs> discharged one afternoon and hired as the GS9 and then sometime later uh, I was fired because I was the junior engineer, mm -hmm. and they had a budget cut, oh, okay. and couldn't afford everyone anymore, so I became the one that went out the door. Mm -hmm. And that's when I had the opportunity to take a job in uh, California, I don't remember what it was, and or New Jersey, and that's what I went with Johnson & Johnson, who, with whom I spent the next 36 years. Wow. So were you a chemical engineer for Johnson & Johnson too? Pardon? Were you a chemical engineer for Johnson & Johnson as well? 
uh, principally no. I was uh, technically rated. Uh, like I said, I originally gone to work for Electric Hose and Rubber Company in Wilmington. We made all the hose for uh, Sears and Roebuck, uh, and didn't get qualified to not get drafted. So when I got drafted, I was just trained as a soldier mm. and rode tanks around. And uh, up there, we were at nights. We were on. Uh, duty and principally it was fire duty, fire watch. Wow. You lived in barracks and you walk up and down the streets carrying your rifle. And uh, one night here comes a bear down the street. A bear? A bear. And uh, we weren't supposed to go into the barracks with our rifles and so forth. I immediately did. You did? <laughs> Yeah, the, I didn't want to tag in with the bear, and uh, <clears throat> uh, that's when I hired on with the uh, non-commissioned officers club who served food and uh, at a good price and very good food. So, and worked weekends with my buddy on running the club. Mm -hmm. uh, so I ended up getting more responsibility over, you know, running the club and so forth than I would have gotten in a, a regular job. Mm, right. So you traveled to many different places with Johnson & Johnson, right? Uh, 240 countries. 240? Yeah. Wow. Which one was your favorite to visit? Uh, can't answer. Uh, Greece, Turkey, that area seemed to be hot. Wow. What? Some of the stuff here is out of Turkey. Okay. Uh, what part of Greece? Uh, I don't really recall. Mm -hmm. I've heard it's really pretty over there. It is. It's beautiful. What was your wife's favorite place? After we moved to Georgia, mm -hmm. we lived on the, in a gated community, uh, which was about, I don't know, 10, 12 miles south of Savannah. It was in the ocean. And 